in this part we will calculate the parameter of the sixth method titled the green and ampit loose method it includes the following parameters a percent of impervious same as for the SCSCN method b initial content this parameter varies between zero and the saturated content value so it is initial value can be zero if the simulation starts after a prolonged period of no rainfall and can reach roughly the saturated content value if the simulation starts after a substantial rainfall event as an initial value we propose to start the simulation after no rainfall period which make a value of 0% appropriate or we propose to start the simulation at the wilting point which make a value of wilting point at a certain, at a certain soil type in the next table appropriate this assumption should be respected in the selection of the simulation periods. In this project, we propose to start the simulation at the wilting point, which make a value of wilting point at certain soil type in the next table appropriate. In this table, we have the soil type in the first field and the corresponding values of the wilting point in the wilting point field and to enter these values of the wilting point into the project we go to the arc map it is worth noting, noting here that we need to use this layer titled Laser Zap DSMW UTM, but this layer contains the SCS soil group and the soil code field only. And it does not contain the soil type for the study area basin. But fortunately, in a previous part, we have prepared a new layer that contains the soil type with the same name and type. And this new layer exists in the following path. Inside the file titled soil type, so we copy this file and we transfer it to the desktop via paste. Then we open the new layer by going to the arc map then add data then we go to the following path desktop soil type laser zap soil type dsmw shapefile utm then we add this layer title laser zap dsmw utm dot shp then 
this in you layout title blazer the bsm w utm is added to the project which contains more information than the old layer of the same name such as the soil type therefore we will use this new layer in the implementation of the project in the study area and we will neglect the old one layer then we open the table of this new layer and in it we note that the soil type for the study area basin exists in the soil type field and according to the soil type in this table we can choose the appropriate value of holding point so in this table we add a new field by going to the table options then add field Then in the type we choose double and we type the name which is INIT cont or initial content which is the second parameter in this method. Then OK. Then we go to the select by attributes and in it we choose soil type then equal then get unique values then we choose the first soil type which is clay then apply then the clay soil is activated then we go to the table and in it we have the clay and the soil field and the corresponding values of the wilting point and the wilting point field is 0.2 then we make a right click on the INIT con field then we press on field calculator then yes then we type 0.2 but it is percent so we type a 20 percent we type 20 percent then okay then the value of initial content parameter is added to the table Then we continue calculating the rest of the values in the INIT cont field in the same way taking into account the selection of the appropriate value from the table according to the soil type of the study area basin as we see.
by that we have finished calculating the initial content parameter in the INIT con field which is the second parameter in this method The rest of parameters in this method are C saturated content. The saturated content is equal to the porosity value of the soil type. By consequence, we can estimate the saturated content of the basin from the USDA soil map established using the next table. D Section in millimeter, the same next table provides correlation between USDA textural plus from one hand and section values from the other hand. E conductivity in millim per hour, the same next table provides correlation between USDA textural plus from one hand and the conductivity values from the other hand. This is the table that contains the rest of the values of the parameters in this method and according to the soil type or texture class we have saturated content or porosity hydraulic conductivity and wetting front suction in porosity we take the same value in this table and the hydraulic con conductivity we transform the values to millimeter per hour and in the suction we transform the value to millimeter so in this table we add a new field for the rest of parameters by going to the table options then add field uh, then in the type we choose double and we type the name which is sat cont or saturated content which is the third parameter in this method then ok then table option then add field then in the type we choose double and we type the name which is suction which is the fourth parameter in this method then ok then table options then add field and the type we choose double and we type the name which is conduct or conductivity which is the fifth parameter in this method then OK. Then we add or calculate the values of these three parameters or fields from the table. So we go to the select by attributes and in it we choose soil type then equal then get unique value then we choose first soil type which is a clay then apply then the clay soil is activated then we go 
to the table and in it for clay soil the value of porosity or saturated content is 0.475 Then we go to set count field and in the field calculator we type 0.475 then ok then we go to the table and for section the value is 71.4 centimeter or 714 millimeter. So we go to the section field. And in the field calculator, we type 714 then ok uh, and we go to the table and for hydraulic conductivity the value is 0.06 centimeter per hour or 0.6 millimeter per hour so we go to the conduct field then we make right click on it Then we press on field calculator, then yes, then we type 0.6, then OK. Then the values of these three parameters for clay soil are added or calculated. Then we continue adding or calculating the rest of the values of these three parameters for the rest of soils types in the study area basin in the same way taking into account the selection of the appropriate value from the table according to the soil type for the study area basin as we see
now we have finished calculating the five parameters in this sixth method titled green and ampit loose method and they are a percent of impervious b initial content c saturated content D suction in millimeter and E conductivity in millimeter per hour. Now we transform this layer titled laser zap dsm w utm which includes the values of the parameters of a green and ampit loose method from vector or polygon to raster for each parameter to do so we open the arc toolbox In the Arc Toolbox window, we go to the Conversion Tools, then we go to the to Raster, and we choose Polygon to Raster. We choose Polygon to Raster. In Input Feature, we choose Laser Zap DSM W UTM. In the Value field, we choose INIT Comp. In the Cell Size, we type 30 and we specify the Save Location inside the Project File. Title Laser Zap and in it we make a new folder with the title INIT Cont. Then we open it and in it we type the save name which is INIT cont then save then OK then a message appears indicating that polygon to raster completed then close then the raster layer of the initial content parameter titled INIT cont appears as we see
Then we continue making the raster layers for the rest of the parameters for this method or a green and ampit loose method in the same way as we see
By that, we have finished calculating the raster layers of five parameters in the sixth method, which is the green and amplitude loose method, and these five parameters are pre-calculated parameter of the percentage of impervious layer PCT IMP initial content INIT cont Saturated content Sat count Suction and hydraulic conductivity conduct. Then we save the project by pressing on save. Now we arrive to the seventh method, which is layered green and amped loose method. It includes the same parameters as the green and amplitude loose method with the ad with addition of some values. This method is very important or it can be used in condition of existence two layer of soil in the study area.